Hi, today we're going to talk about managing developers and our morning routine. Hi, welcome back. If this is your first time here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so that you don't miss a single episode. So before you get too far in this video, you got two prerequisites. First, make sure you've already looked at the episode about checklists. Second, make sure you're familiar with the episode about setting proper expectations. If you haven't, I'll leave links in the show notes. So here's the challenges. Every day has resources, we need to be productive. And whether you're reporting to someone or someone is reporting to you, being busy and being productive are two very different things. So how do you make sure that the people that you work with are focused on what matters? And also very important, you need to make sure that you're making measurable progress towards your goal. So one of the habits of excellence is to have daily conversations in the morning with people that you report to or that report to you to make sure that everybody agrees on what the priorities should be. So speaking from personal experience, back in the days where I didn't do this, it would actually be quite often that I would walk up to a dev towards the end of the day or sometimes even the next day and I'd ask how they're doing. And then they would explain what they're actually working on and as the feeling of dread would start to crawl up my spine I'd realized that they were working on the absolute wrong priority. And they might actually jeopardize a deadline or a customer commitment that was coming up. So then we had to scramble, put everybody back on track, and work double time to make sure that the commitment gets delivered on time. The ritual that I use is actually very simple. It basically boils down to a daily conversation. And it goes like this. Visit the devs in your team. And it helps to have what I call a morning checklist. Definitely one thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you catch up socially. It's important. You want to keep a relationship with the people working with you. You want them to feel comfortable about telling you anything. And that basically starts with a good relationship. If you constantly ignore what's going on in their personal life, chances are is that they're going to start ignoring what's going on in your professional life and the commitments that you make and are responsible for. So unless this is their first day in the office, you definitely want to revise yesterday's deliverables. What got done and what didn't. Whatever didn't get done usually gets attached to the top of today's list. So you revise yesterday's priorities and go through that checklist to make sure that you agree with what was done, you understand what interruptions they had to face and deal with, what emergencies came up, and ultimately what got done. This is your opportunity to see if a project is actually on track or is slowly getting delayed or sidetracked because of other priorities. Once that's done, and you want to revise today's priorities, I personally like to ask, so what's the priority today? What are you going to accomplish? Now notice my choice of word. What are you going to accomplish? You absolutely want to avoid words like continue, working, work, or anything that is basically non-committal and can't be measured. You want to use terminology like finish, close, deliver. Those are very powerful words with statements you can measure. So on the next day, when you're actually going through yesterday's to-do list, it's very easy to agree on what was done and what wasn't. Once you've gone through today's priorities, then you need to mutually agree. And this goes back to setting up proper expectations. This is not one-sided. You need to ask the person you're working with, what can you do today? You want to be firm. You want to push, but only up to a point. You don't want to be unreasonable. After all, they might have other priorities that they need to deal with. And if those are the right priorities, then you're just going to have to share the time. If those are the wrong priorities, then of course, you need to help them set the priorities straight, which is very important. It might also be that you have this rogue developer that doesn't necessarily understand priorities as you see them. 
and they're constantly saying yes to other people. Once you've agreed on the daily deliverables, that should be recapped in an email and sent to the manager. This is very important because on the next day, nobody wants to remember what was said, what was agreed. And up to a point, you do want to hold people accountable over what they've committed to. But at the same time, this is simply a healthy checklist over what they want to do. In my experience, I've actually dealt with developers, especially new ones, where they overpromise on their daily deliverables. And this will happen for a couple of days, but it usually ends up correcting itself once they've seen that for a couple of days straight, they just basically can't deliver the entire list. And at some point, you may want to sit down with them and basically explain that you want them to accomplish things. It's not about them saying what you want to hear. What you want to hear is actually what they can do. What you want to hear is not that everything will get done on time. Because if it's not going to happen, that's not what you want to hear. The second phase of my morning routine is that I also have a checklist over everybody that's supposed to send me a daily email, a recap of their deliverables. I will go through that checklist on the hour to make sure that all those emails are in my inbox. Now, in a perfect world, you should have very well-disciplined devs they send you their recap email within five minutes. If they don't, that's a red flag. If you can follow up with them immediately, once they're past the five minute mark, that's ideal. Basically, you want to softly drill some discipline. You want to make them understand that they should not move on to any other priority. Their priority, once the daily meeting's been done, is to actually send you their priority. They should not start working on them immediately until the email is sent. And let's face it, Typing up an email with three to eight items shouldn't take more than five minutes, especially for someone that's quick on the keyboard. Keep chasing those missing emails until you get them all. I'll use personally a number of different techniques here, from humor all the way to public shaming if I have to. I've had people tell me at the end of the day that they've had no time to send me their recap email. The next day, I would be standing next to them, tapping my foot, waiting for them to enter their email client and type it up and hit the send button. You don't want to be overboard, but you want to make sure that the point makes it. You want to make sure that they understand that this is important and it's actually part of their job. It needs to be done. Whatever means you need to use, starting with be nice, use it, make it happen. And again, you want to avoid non-committal words in the email. I personally have an autoresponder for anybody that uses certain keywords like continue, and working and work. The words that I personally want to see is complete, finish, deliver, and so forth. As usual, I've put in a little bit of a cheat sheet to summarize what's gone into today's video. If you want to download the PDF, you can find it in the show notes. Thank you. See you next week.